I literally just recorded this video and my mic was off and I've got to get to work soon, so let's make this faster. Anyway, it looks like the 4060 Ti is uh, getting some release dates discussed. This is from Mega Science GPU, which is a source that has leaked a lot of things accurately in the past. And I'm gonna follow this up with some further confirmation from other sources. 4060 Ti, 8 gigabyte and 16 gigabyte. Has Nvidia finally heard the plea that we want more VRAM on these new GPUs? It certainly looks that way. Now let's, and then the 4060 also coming in. Now let's talk about these release dates because um, uh, videocards.com has a follow-up article on this. Well, they had an article on this and then they have a follow-up article where they talk to their own sources. So, uh, according to their own sources, the 4060 Ti uh, has a, they, they basically got more specific release dates on these. So 4060 Ti 8 gigabyte uh, will launch on May 24th. Again, this is not official from Nvidia. This is from videocards.com sources. Videocards.com claiming their own sources has leaked things extremely accurately in the past. So I would put a lot of stake in these rumors, but again, please note rumors anyway. 4060 Ti 8 gigabyte, 16 gigabyte, and 4060 non-Ti 8 gigabyte will be announced in mid-May. Looks like the release, first one to be released will be the 4060 Ti 8 gigabyte on May 24th, and then followed in uh, the first half of July, not June, with the 4060 non-Ti 8 gigabyte. We will then get the 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte in the second half of July. Note that all of this could change. None of this is official. Even if videocards.com has accurate information from their sources at this time, release dates and things like that and product release plans can change. So again, none of this is 100% confirmed. Now, if we hop down to the stats that we would expect on these, let's talk a little bit about that. For me, the main thing is gonna be price point uh, for how interesting these are especially interesting on how much more the 16 gigabyte model will cost than the eight gigabyte model. And it also feels like wait on buying the 4060 Ti eight gigabyte until we get the 16 gigabyte out there and can compare the pricing differences or let's at least see the, or maybe they'll announce the prices, uh, you know, in, in May when this launches, I don't know. Because while eight gigabytes is fine in a lot of games right now, there are already some games that at their max settings are pushing past that even at 1080p or 1440p. And so 16 gigabytes feels like a bit of overkill at this performance tier but eight gigabytes does feel a little bit low. Again, performance tier, we would expect this to be performing similarly to a 3070 Ti, which, and again, in a lot of games is fine with eight gigabytes, but is starting to run into some places where that is an issue right now. And this also will depend on how long you're hanging onto your card, right? We saw the 1060 three gigabyte versus six gigabyte, where at launch, you know, maybe save a little bit of money on your three gigabytes, but you know, does it matter right now? Well, it certainly matters today. So if you still have a 1060 today, the six gigabyte version can still run most modern games, whereas the three gigabyte version has a lot more trouble or sometimes can't even launch. Anyway, um, now how would you even fit 16 gigabytes on a 128 bit bus? So basically a, a memory bus uh, needs 32 bits to connect a, a, a uh, VRAM module. Okay, you need 30 bit, two bits for a VRAM module. The modules are usually one gigabytes or two gigabytes. So two gigabytes, 128 bits, you only have room for four two gigabyte modules. That's eight gigabytes. That's why it was gonna be an eight gigabyte card. The solution to that is to go into clamshell mode. That's uh, called that because you would stick one module on the front and the back of the PCB, and then they run into the same 32 bit um, uh, connection. And this allows you to double the VRAM capacity without increasing the memory bus. That's the basic idea. So I'm very interested in what we get here in terms of price because performance wise, and especially if we get 16 gigabytes and it's not too much more expensive, I think, you know, if this was basically a 3070 Ti with 16 gigabytes, frame generation and lower power draw, it could be a very interesting card, again, if it's priced appropriately. That's my same thoughts on the 4060, even if it's only eight gigabytes, if the, if the performance is low enough that that's reasonable, I mean, okay, again, if the price is reasonable to go along with that, uh, you can see how these stack up against the 3060 Ti and 3060 uh, specs wise right here. So very interesting stuff, but I'm also extremely interested in, um, it looks like AMD launching the RX 7600 as an eight gigabyte graphics card uh, coming in on the 25th. So the very next day after the rumored launch date of the 3060 Ti eight gigabyte, looks like videocards.com has already been sent a, uh, a picture of RX 7600s sitting on a store shelf. That doesn't mean they're for sale. It's apparently somewhere in Asia. Uh, this also came along with a room uh, with a uh, price tag of 249, but videocards.com has said that they were unable to confirm that with their own sources. So make of it what you will. 
Um, currently, the RX 6600, the, uh, so the previous generation version of this came in at, well, came in at 329, but is currently available at only $200. And like the 6650 XT, you, sh you can get around, you know, 270-ish. So, uh, I don't know. I feel like the uh, the pricing will be everything on this. It's also interesting that they're skipping a huge part of the uh, the lineup and going straight to the 7600. But I've talked about that in previous videos. Why um, I think they need to sell through their cards like the 6800 XT and 6900 XT, 6950 XT, because at current pricing, I think they would be competing too much with themselves. But I'm also, like I said, worried about that with the 7600 because where do you price this depending on its performance uh, up against the uh, 6600, 6650 XT, 67 700, which already um, offer very good price to performance right now. Now, speaking of price to performance, well, how about you uh, offset some of the price with Diablo 4 bundled in with your GeForce GPU? So NVIDIA uh, is offering a 40 series GPU bundle with Diablo 4, which sounds pretty interesting. It's currently 4090, 4080, 4070 Ti, and 4070 graphics cards available for the bundle. Unclear if the 4060 would be included in that bundle when it launches. Apparently, the, this runs from May 9th to June 13th, so that would fit at least the 4060 Ti 8GB into that launch window. Unclear if it will be included as part of the bundle. Looks like there's also some cosmetic items in other Blizzard games available as part of this bundle. Certainly a more interesting bundle than we saw with Redfall. Now, we're also seeing rumors of a new 4070 coming off of a salvaged 4080 uh, die. This is apparently coming from Copite7Kimmy, uh, who says RTX 4070 can have a version based on 8103. So if you're not sure what that means, if we jump over to the Tech Power Up database, you can see the GPU chip included in each of the, uh, the, the um, cards. The 4080 is the only 8103. The 4070 uses 8104, but it's not unusual for a chip that can't make it as a 4080 to be cut down and used as something else. This would be the first time we'd be seeing this in the 4000 series, but we've seen this in other series. I've seen some people arguing that that would make it a 16 gigabyte card or a more powerful 4070. Well, they could do that. That There's no indication that that is what they're planning on doing if this rumor even uh, points, uh, points out to be true, because usually what we see is they just cut it down to the point where it performs exactly the same. And unless you went out of your way to find out, you wouldn't even be aware that you had a different chip in your, in your PC. Jumping over to some other news, um, DaVinci Resolve Studio Beta gets AV1 encoding support for AMD GPUs. This is a big deal for me personally, because currently uh, I do use DaVinci Resolve as my editing program, and I do use AV1 encoding. I'm currently doing it on my 4080. My 4090 doesn't even fit in the case I'm doing with my cap because of my capture card. Anyway, um, <laughs> uh, so I would be actually interested in seeing if my 7900 XDX would outperform it, uh, given that it has more VRAM, um, that kind of stuff. Uh, so I'll be interested in this, but again, it's a beta release of DaVinci Resolve getting that support, but overall good news for AMD, where one of the uh, arguments for buying NVIDIA is better support and productivity apps. So with AV1 encoding, getting into DaVinci Resolve, uh, that's good news for a lot of people in that space. Now, we've all seen AMD on a blog post, although I'm seeing it reported at WCCF Tech, uh, showing performance in a bunch of games with FSR2 and ray tracing, claiming that you can hit 4K 60 FPS gaming with ray tracing maxed out, um, or at least enabled. <laughs> um, it says, oh, so it does say maximum ray tracing settings. Uh, as long as you're willing to use FSR. So the gray bar here is FSR2 off, and then we get various levels of FSR2. Um, and again, this is the XTX at 4K uh, resolution, showing that, yeah, you can break 60 FPS. Of course, I'm not the one testing this, so I don't know what scene and all of that they're testing. This is the 7900 XT under the same conditions. And then they also showed off Cyberpunk RT Ultra, Although they didn't show off the overdrive mode, I believe they claimed that that is not an official graphics preset in the game, it's a technology preview. And that is true, that is how it is labeled in the game, although that could also be a reason just to not show how they perform there. <laughs> Path tracing is a bit much for them at this point. Honestly, it's a bit much for most NVIDIA GPUs too. Now, AMD to showcase next-gen data center AI technology on June 13th, but this doesn't sound like it's particularly ga gaming hardware related, so I'm gonna kind of breeze by this one in the interest of time. 
Um, check it out in the video description. All my sources are there if you're interested. Colorful is announcing a new GPU trade-in program with up to $1,041 for a used card, although it would have to be a colorful card. And I believe this is available in China. So this is interesting, but I don't think it's going to affect most of my audience. Uh, these are their trade-in values though. This reminds me a lot of uh, how EVGA used to have their like step-up program where I think you could turn in your old EVGA card to help buy a new one. Looks like Colorful doing a similar thing in ch the Chinese market. And hey, if you have a 3090 Ti, you can get over $1,000 for it on the trade-in, which I think is more than they, they're, they're selling for used on eBay, although maybe the Chinese market is different. Now, Intel comments on new layoffs, budget cuts in client CPU and data center groups. I was trying to find out if this was hitting the uh, graphics division, but could not find any information on that. But just in general, uh, Intel not doing well. There's some layoffs, um, yeah. Moving on. AMD's AGISA 1.0.0.7 rolled back to 1.0.0.7a, um, limiting some of the like uh, uh, SOC voltages, probably related to those burning up CPUs, and you'll have to wait for your mother, uh, motherboard vendor to make sure it has a BIOS out, uh, and you should update to the latest, latest BIOS with the latest AGISA um, version as soon as that's available for you. On a related and I think interesting note, um, I'm seeing this article from a non-tech saying that AMD is gonna eventually replace AGISA entirely with an open source, uh, open SIL. So basically, um, uh, AMD's generic encapsulated software architecture, AGISA firmware, uh, plans to be replaced with an open source alternative called Open Source Silicon Initialization Library, or Open SIL. Uh, they think it should be ready in 2026. There's a bit of a roadmap here. Uh, interesting quote at the end of the article saying, while AMD admits that OpenSIL is still a work in progress, it's very close to parity with the GISA. However, since it won't be ready until 2026, uh, and AMD's roadmap uh, points to Zen 5 in 2024, it would probably be to, until Zen 6 or even Zen 7 before we saw that in a finished product. Uh, but I do like that AMD uh, really embraces a lot of open source technology. That's pretty cool. Now we're seeing the Fizen chief warning of bankruptcies in the NAND industry. Have you noticed how cheap SSDs have been lately? I've posted some deals on my community page. Well, apparently the Fizen chief says that further NAND price cuts were not viable and warned of potential bankruptcies among suppliers if the market doesn't recover. Um, now they're saying they're still uh, investing in R&D and hoping for a turnaround. Now, another interesting story. How about PSVR2 hardware authentication has been cracked on PC? So this doesn't mean we have PSVR2 up and running on PC, but this is at least a step in that direction. Uh, it's looking like um, when question, question on how they did it, uh, the, uh, the reply was, I'm not at liberty to discuss that. It's pretty locked down. It's unlikely that we could get locked out unless Sony changes the way peripheral authentication happens on PS5. We'd have to give them more incentive than letting some of their customers use their headset on a PC. Now, in general, I would uh, like to see development on this continue. It's a really cool VR headset. I'd love to see it up and running on PC. What I'd really love to see is Sony just officially release a driver for it on PC. But in the meantime, glad to see people working on uh, solving the problem. Now, we're seeing um, System Shock Remake is officially gold, final system requirements confirmed. So what do we have to make of this? Well, there should be a May 30th release date and the system requirements look very reasonable. Uh, looks like minimum requirements of a GTX 672 gigabyte or Radeon HD 7872 gigabyte or better and pretty modest processor requirements as well. Uh, if you're seeing the old uh, HD 7000 series Radeons, you know we're going back a ways. So it uh, should be fine. And the recommended specs are a GTX 970 4 gigabyte or AMD Radeon R9 290 4 gigabyte and still pretty weak on the, on the CPU requirements and memory 8 gigabyte. So it looks like this game should be fairly easy to run if we go by the system requirements. Now, speaking of games that are not easy to run and did not get a great PC support, uh, but are getting patched, it looks like The Last of Us Part 1 had a 1.05 patch last night. I actually played it a bit myself. I'm actually just playing this game. It's a game I'm playing right now, along with Jedi Survivor. Um, and I did notice the shader compilation time did seem better. It seemed like it took about 10 minutes and I, I feel like it used to take me more like 20 minutes. So I think it does have improved shader compilation time, which they do claim as part of the patch. And I can confirm that at least. Um, and there's a bunch of other optimizations, including um, better scalability at low settings, uh, better CPU utilization, 
all sorts of stuff, but it looks like the game is just continuing to get chipped away at in terms of better and better uh, support on PC. So I think more, more, more improvements would be welcome, but at least uh, they're continuing to step in the right direction. We're also seeing Star Wars Jedi Survivor um, with a patch hitting uh, PS5 and Xbox, but details for the PC version of that patch, which I don't think was available as of last night when I checked. Not sure if it's out yet today. Um, uh, they're saying PC players will benefit from reduced idle time stalls through updated occlusion behavior for ray tracing. In addition, the streaming budgets have been updated, which should reduce traversal hitting. Um, also included with this upcoming patch are some VFX performance improvements. And um, anyway, so this sounds good. I'm, I'm happy to see these games getting into a better state. What I would really like to see is games launched in a better state initially. Now, this isn't directly related to this, but I want to kind of relate it. Like a lot of people are saying that the reason why we, and myself included, that we don't see these launch in good state on PC is that developers are just targeting consoles. They're easier to optimize for. There's a bunch, there's a huge install base. They make more money there. I do want to mention that there's a lot of money to be made on PC if you release PC specific games or PC focused games. And Activision Blizzard is showing, again, PC sales surpassing their console sales by 27 million in the first quarter of 2023. Now, again, Blizzard does have World of Warcraft, which isn't available on consoles, along with, and, you know, Overwatch, I think, you know, well, it has console version, I think is more PC centric. But my point is, if you develop games with PC in mind, you can make money there. Just throwing that out there. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, also, Plague Tale Requiem getting a 60 FPS performance mode on consoles, along with new graphics options on PC that can help, um, especially the CPU performance on the PC. Uh, if we dig into some of the details here, uh, I believe what they're saying is that, okay, so this game can have a large number of rats on screen. That's just part of the game if you haven't played it. Um, like a massive number of rats, like insane number of rats on screen. So if, if you can reduce the number of rats on screen, as well as the, uh, lower the refresh rate and that of other characters on screen, reducing their refresh rate, that can improve CPU usage on lower end systems, which is good. Um, anyway, last thing I'll end with today is that an overclocker has broken the 3.825 gigahertz frequency record with the GeForce RTX 4090 in a 3D test. This looks like in Unigen, is it Unigen superposition? Anyway, I've got to get my kids up and get ready for work because like I said, the first time I recorded this video, my microphone wasn't plugged in. I hope all of you have an excellent day.